we're just about ready to have Alexis on the, on the schedule. So um, maybe without further ado, we could introduce Alexis. That sounds great. That sounds great. Bianca, off to, off to you to, 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 to bring in uh, <laughs> Mr. Alexis Richardson. <laughs> All right. Yes. Uh, welcome, Alexis. Um, he's going to explain what is GitOps, um, and I'm going to help him out with his slides. So if you hear him saying next slide, that, that's just me in the background. Welcome, Alexis. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bianca and Damani, for a great intro. Very happy to be here. Um, I'm locked down officially in London because of coronavirus. Uh, the whole country is, but it's sunny outside. I'm not going to turn on my camera because we want to do the slides and I have a special coronavirus lockdown haircut right now. So <laughs> um, thank you very much. I can see the slides. I hope everybody else can as well. Uh, welcome. And this is GitOps Days EMEA. As Damani said last time, people said, hey, what about this time zone thing? I don't want to see this in the middle of the night. So here, here we are for you folks in the European time zone, which includes many people around the world. Uh, ready to show you the basics today, uh, business value and the technology deep, deep dive tomorrow. Next slide, please. What is GitOps? We get asked this question a lot. It's because everybody is asking, what is this thing I'm hearing about and how can it help me? What do I do next? Let's go to the next slide. So it's an operational model. It's how to do operations. So think about it this way, Git, which we know through things like GitHub and GitLab and other things, is about development uh, for applications, which nowadays often means cloud native applications. And it is a cloud native solution providing source control. Continuous integration is quite common now in Git offerings. Uh, things like image distribution, scanning and testing, and, and so much more. This is all about the developer and test cycle, but what about operations? What if you need it? What if you can add to your dev tooling something else that gives you what you need for operational management, like being able to deliver and deploy applications, manage stacks? What about if I have multiple stacks and I have fleets? I'm starting to think about many different applications in the cloud or on multiple clouds. How do I make that simple, possible, manageable? working for everybody correctly. And that's what GitOps gives you. It gives you a mechanical programmatic automation to manage many, many things. And if you're listening and you're thinking, I don't want everything to be automated. Indeed, that is true for many people. You have manual steps as well. GitOps allows for that. It would just make sure the pieces that you need are streamlined. Next slide, please. And so I think automation is the word to keep in your head when you're thinking about GitOps. And people have been using automation and computers for a very long time. And it's just the latest generation of that. So don't be alarmed. Let's have the next slide. So why, why, why does this matter? You know, here are some things that you might have heard somebody ask in your organization recently. What about, hey, I want to have I want to do a mobile backend. Give me a mobile cluster. Or what if I want to do machine learning? I'm a data scientist. Please, can I have a ready-to-use environment to do machine learning? That would, would be great. And at the moment, people are setting those things up piece by piece, and it takes time, and they're not always set up correctly. Wouldn't it be great if you could just instantly have a correct environment for the problem that you want to solve? GitOps can enable that. What about moving your stack or your cluster, your application, your mesh, if, if you're using that sort of thing, uh, your dashboards as well. Shut them all down on Google, start them up on Amazon, or shut them down on Amazon, move them to my data center, or move them to Azure, or I want them on Azure and I want them on my data center. How do I do that? And it's just a bit too science fiction for many people, but actually this is also really easy with GitOps. And then, more complex things like, hey, let's test this application, but let's use the next version of EKS. And if it works against the next version, let's do a full upgrade. And oh no, by now, um, you might have found that your SREs have, have all left the company because they're so fed up with answering these questions. So, <clears throat> you know, it's tough and we can help with GitOps. And you, if you ask people, 
how do you know if your system is in the correct state now and they're not sure? And GitOps is a really good answer for them. Next slide, please. And so this idea of, am I in the right state? Is everything correct? Is my stack right or wrong? That includes my application, my cluster, other pieces of my infrastructure. The, the key un, un, notion here is reproducibility. If I have one version of it, I can have many versions of it, as many as I like. Uh, some people use the phrase um, pets versus cattle, famously. Uh, you know, you can't reproduce your pet. You love your pet. It lives, and then oh, sadly, at the end of its life, it dies. Uh, cattle, on the other hand, um, this is not a very pleasant thought now that I think about it, but in farming, you know, you have lots of cattle and people tend to think about them as uh, reproducible in some sense or fungible. Re reproducibility is key for um, in IT environments. If I can make many, many, many copies of my stack, I can m manage it much more easily and that helps me scale. Next slide, please. And if you want an example of what this looks like in the real physical world, just go to any robot factory today. I'm not sure how to get in there, but this is a picture I found on the internet. But you, know, you can see here, each of these machines is programmatically churning out an identical copy of this physical object. In this case, I think this is a car. Um, and this is something that we that somebody can scale. You know, if you have the, the machines and the money and the desire, you could make more of these factories to make more of these cars. And so IT technology um, can be more like this, which means that you know, we can focus on things that matter, like making customers happy. Let's go to the next slide. And so GitOps, which really came out of the world of Kubernetes today, makes your Kubernetes stacks, that means cluster plus application plus other pieces, correct based on a program and reproducible so that you can automate and scale your operations. Let's go on. Next slide, thank you. So how does it do that? Simple idea, agents. Agents live inside the cluster and they compare each stack they're looking after. There might be multiple agents, multiple stacks with what we call the desired state. Think about the desired state as a, as a model or a map of what your application should look like when you want it to be correct. And the agents are looking at that desired state and saying, aha, is the running stack the same as what the desired state says it should be? This happens continually. And if there is some out of sync, like the, the stack drifts from its correct state, or maybe there's an update in the desired state, like, hey, here's a new version to deploy, the agent will say, right, what I need to do is reconcile this difference. That means I'm going to take um, the desired state, I'm going to take the running state, and I'm going to make changes to the running state until the desired state is the same. That's called forcing convergence to the correct state. And this allows you to do many things. Next slide, please. So we can automate all these different things. One, we can do application deployment. And this is probably the most common use case for GitOps today, CICD the CD piece of CI, CD in particular. Let's say I have Jenkins or Circle CI, and I'm generating artifacts for deployment. I can do automated or semi-automated deployment using GitOps because my agent can see when a new application or image or config is ready for deployment because it sees that the desired state has changed and now the running state is out of sync with it. So it goes, aha, now I can do a deployment. Or I can do more complex things like release automation. So you may have heard of A-B testing, canary rollouts, uh, also complex things like checking policy across uh, your, your pipeline and across your clusters. Like, is this cluster in the correct state according to these security permissions, for example? All of that can be part of your GitOps uh, pipeline and process. And what we're seeing a lot more now is people applying the same concepts not just to applications, but also to clusters and to fleets. So how do I patch my cluster? How do I update it? How do I upgrade it? In GitOps, you tell the cluster manager, hey, the version has changed, therefore you need to do an upgrade and it will reconcile that change. It's very powerful. And now we're also seeing add-on management. If you talk about a stack, that might be Kubernetes plus Helm, plus 
plus Prometheus, plus Envoy, plus Jaeger, plus my application, that's six or seven things. That's a whole stack. How do we capture that as a single description, a single desired state, and then say, that's my platform? GitOps lets you do that too. And all of these things are automated so they can scale correctly. Next slide, please. Okay, so let's dig down just one layer and see how that works. Next slide. One more slide, please. Thank you. So these are what we call the principles of GitOps. And many of you watching this may have seen this. Many of you are thinking, I do this already, or I do some of this already. We believe that to do GitOps, to get the fullest potential for GitOps, not just for your Kubernetes cluster, but for your applications and for your dashboards, for your infrastructure and your fleets and your networks and everything else, you should do all of these things. Number one, you need to have a model of your system. This is your desired state. Uh, it will say, this is how many computers I need. This is how many clusters. This is the properties of the clusters. This is the applications. These are the images I'm using, the version numbers, the config files, everything. We can do that also for alerts, dashboards, infrastructure, the whole caboodle. That description lives in a source control system that is capable of supporting versioning, authentication, and non-reputable change, and an audit log of change correctly. And Git is a perfect implementation of that. That's why we sort of talk about GitOps. Um, this lets you move forward and backward in time with different versions, and it also lets you include metadata like here's why I made this commit now or here's a group of commits that are related to one another that I'm signing with my secure signature. Then you need agents and these do essentially two things the approval of changes which may be applied automatically to the system and then inside the cluster the agents are monitoring watching observing the state of the whole stack not just Kubernetes but everything and saying, hey, is this in the right state? And these then work together to reconcile the changes continually based on the declaration in your desired state. And that gives you the behavior. So let's go to the next slide. Breaking it down, how do we guarantee correct changes to production? Production is some, something that, like in this flight recorder, we don't necessarily want to open up. We should just look at it from the outside and make permitted changes to it. Next slide. Normally, in the past, we've done this manually. One by one, we'll push a change into the cluster, hope it will work, look at the cluster from the outside to see if it, if it happened. So we might use kubectl or a GUI or a CI script. And this is dangerous, but it is kind of what people do. So it's, I guess it's okay. Let's move to the next slide. And this is kind of the thing is that it, if you do manual changes or you use scripts, this is okay for controllable, small, easily understood, easily verified changes, certainly for dev test, of course, but also some of the smaller cases in production. But let's go to the next slide. What if we have lots of teams, lots of apps, lots of clusters, lots of changes happening at the same time, lots of different security policies to think about? How do we apply all of these correctly? We can't do it all manually. And we don't want a CI system to try and script a whole bunch of these changes because that very rapidly becomes unmanageable. Let's go to the next slide. And CI, I'm not trying to do it down. CI is fantastic, but it's just not really an operational tool at scale because it can't tell what state we're in. The agents that I've mentioned a few times know what state we're in all the time. Secondly, if the CI deployment fails, we may be in what's called a partial failure state where we don't know exactly what went right and what went wrong. And often what happens then is you have to rerun the whole change set of changes from scratch, which leads to, which is slow and annoys people and leads to fewer changes and it can lead to downtime. And then there are a whole load of security questions. You know, CI and GUIs are a potential threat vector um, if not managed right and you know, if you are a security person, you, you shudder to think about some of the potential things that could go wrong here. I know that many of you know how to do it properly, but when multiple systems are under management, this just gets harder and harder to do. So let's get it right. Let's go to the next slide. 
this is, these are some examples that I came up with to show this complexity and what it can do to you. You know, it's not just about one cluster anymore. Tell me which of my 10 components in my stack are not in a correct state. Is my Prometheus in the right state? Is my Grafana dashboard in the right state? Is my Helm in the right state? What if I'm doing patches and I want to patch these three clusters in my fleet, but not those ones? Or what if I'm doing something like, hey, I want these environments right now for machine learning, and then I want to update the models before I start coding. Or I want to do upgrades, but, but keep, keep available at the same time. Or I'm doing feature flags. All of these are examples of complex changes where just using CI or doing it manually is going to be risky. Let's go on. Next slide, please. Oops, can we go back one, please? Thank you. So GitHub says, what if we could take our existing CI but add to it with a way to programmatically do deployments and verify as we're doing them that these updates are correct and secure and also potentially monitor the live state and fix it if it goes wrong? Let's go forward. Next slide. And so we have this alternative model where now we have these agents running inside our, our clusters, which can see inside and see everything securely. They, sh they inherit all the security properties of the Kubernetes itself. And they can compare the state that they can see in the desired state outside with, um, which is living in Git and doesn't describe just the cluster, but also other things like the apps and the dashboards and the imagery pose and everything. The whole world is the desired state and say, is it, am I in the right state? And then, based on deciding whether I'm in the right state or the wrong state, an agent can apply an update, enforce convergence, it can report success, or it can alert on drift, which means help, help, help. I think I'm in the wrong state. Please help me fix it. And that's when obviously, obviously sometimes you have manual intervention in, in a crisis. And at Weaveworks, we manage every single thing in this way. We run a, a 24 seven global SaaS, we can shut it down, we can bring it up anywhere we want to, and we help customers do the same thing in large banks, in, in telco, in, in cars, many different use cases are amenable to working in this way really, really nicely. Multi-cloud application deployment made simple. So let's go to the next slide. And here's a key concept to take away. It's a continuous loop. This reconciliation loop which is checking for changes and applying them all the time, just goes round and round and round and round and round forever. Doing all of the things that could be that are shown here all the time, indefinitely. And that is how we do operations at scale. So let's go to the next slide. Automation is the key word to remember, but now next slide. It's continuous automation. This is what it means to be cloud native. You have a, a lot of descriptions of your system, your desired states for all of the systems under management, and they're continually being forced into convergence. This is very different from the old way of doing computing where we do one, two, three, and then I'm done. And that's my automation. Now automation is happening all the time at scale around us to make everything correct. Let's go to the next slide. So there are those principles again. The system is described declaratively. That lives in version control. We have approved changes, manual policy sometimes, that are then automatically applied. And we use software agents to ensure correctness and alert on drift and take action. Next slide, please. So it's a cloud native operations model, simplifying and making applications and operations better. There are loads and loads of production use cases now. You'll hear about some today and tomorrow. Big cloud vendors, Amazon, Alibaba, Microsoft, Google, VMware, all of these companies are in some way or other getting behind GitOps today. And that means the big enterprises are too, which is great if you're in that world. On the dev side, I'm really excited to see tools like GitHub with Actions and GitLab with runners providing workflow support and automation on the dev, set, dev test side. This is not the whole GitOps story, but certainly very important complement and an advanced way of doing CI. And then in the CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, there are tools popping up everywhere and a bright future there for you to do GitOps. And finally, 
the big takeaway for this week is we're seeing GitOps break out beyond Kubernetes now. It started in Kubernetes, but now we're seeing companies like Google, Azure, and um, Amazon doing uh, Kubernetes, uh, sorry, doing GitOps for the cloud services that attach to Kubernetes, um, like databases and Lambda functions. We're also seeing uh, people use Kubernetes CRDs to wire up enterprise services this way. We're starting to see GitOps being used for machine control, uh, for data versioning, for machine learning as well. It's very exciting to see where it could go. We welcome everybody to be part of this community. So that is me done for today. And I wanna to say thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to the organizers and hand back to Damani and Bianca, I hope.